Dinosaurs and the Bible. What in the world do those two ideas have to do with each other? Well, the Bible presents a very straightforward story of creation. God created the universe in six days. He made the swimming and flying animals on the fifth day of creation, and He made all land-living animals and humans on day six. If that's true, then God created dinosaurs and humans on the very same day since dinosaurs were land-living creatures. Most books and movies and articles that write about or teach things about dinosaurs hardly ever teach that dinosaurs and humans live together. In fact, they teach that dinosaurs and humans were separated by millions of years. In fact, they teach that dinosaurs died out about 65 million years ago and that humans evolved in some shape, form, or fashion about a million years ago. And so most of the teaching on dinosaurs says that humans and dinosaurs were separated by over 60 million years. Did God create dinosaurs and humans together on the sixth day of creation, or did they evolve millions of years apart? When we look at all the evidence, we find that humans and dinosaurs were indeed together on the earth, just as the Bible says. First, there are numerous places in which humans of the past left depictions of dinosaurs. On the Kachina Natural Bridge in Blanding, Utah, there's a wall carving that the Anasazi Indians put there that one evolutionist stated bears a startling resemblance to a dinosaur. Why would that be something that would startle someone who is an evolutionist? Well, because you're finding something that you didn't expect to find. It's startling, almost gives you a start, a carving of a dinosaur that Indians put there and showing that Indians could have seen those reptiles. In addition, there's a fossil of a dinosaur that resembles the carving of an Apatosaurus that was found only 45 miles away from the Kachina Natural Bridge. In a temple in Cambodia, we know it was constructed in 1187 AD, and researchers found a carving that resembles a dinosaur there. In fact, one expert in Cambodian art stated that the carving is, and I quote, a very convincing representation of a stegosaurus. In Peru, ancient Indian burial stones have been found that have animals carved on them that match our understanding of dinosaurs. Interestingly, these stones, they were found beginning in the 1930s, yet they had plant-eating dinosaurs depicted on them that had spikes on their backs. What's unusual about this is that we didn't know that those long-necked, long-tailed plant-eating dinosaurs had spikes on their back until we found fossilized skin in 1991. In addition, in Acambaro, Mexico, there have been hundreds of clay figurines that were unearthed in the 1940s that depicted dinosaurs in various different positions and actions. You add to this the fact that recent dinosaur fossils have been found that aren't complete fossils. They're actually bones that have some soft tissue in them. The bone has been mineralized, but the soft tissue has not. Partial red blood cells and collagen are still present in numerous dinosaur fossils. If these fossils were millions of years old, the fragile soft tissues, they would have long decayed and been mineralized, but they weren't. Furthermore, the Bible is the most historically accurate record available to humans. It says very plainly that God created everything in six days. And that would mean that dinosaurs and humans were created on the very same day. And the Bible also mentions an animal called a behemoth. And the text states that God made along with humans. It says that behemoth eats grass like an ox. See, now his strength is in his hips and his power is in his stomach muscles. He moves his tail like a cedar. His bones are like beams of bronze. You read that in the book of Job chapter 40 verses 15 and following. Some people have suggested that, well, this has got to be an elephant or a hippopotamus. It doesn't make any sense. Elephants and hippopotamuses, they don't have huge tails that swing like a cedar. What would? A huge plant-eating dinosaur matches the description perfectly. So where did dinosaurs go? And the fact of the matter is many animals have gone extinct in the past. That's nothing new. But the idea of an asteroid hitting the Yucatan Peninsula and causing 
catastrophic fires and volcanoes killing the dinosaurs and them dying out 65 million years ago, it's got some problems. Crocodiles supposedly were alive then, and crocodiles are still with us. Sharks, turtles. Why those animals still living and not dinosaurs? You see, a better explanation for where dinosaurs went is available. Every time we find a huge dinosaur graveyard, they exist all over the world, what caused those huge graveyards? In virtually every single instance, it was a flood. What flood would have had the power to kill thousands of dinosaurs and bury them in huge mass graveyards all over the world? The global flood of Noah? It provides a perfect answer. But if you're thinking through it, if the flood killed most of the dinosaurs, what about the ancient human artwork? Hey, didn't some people after the flood see them and carve them and depict them on cave walls or burial stones? That means some of the dinosaurs must have been on the ark. But how are you going to get these huge creatures on Noah's ark? Well, the answer is much simpler than most people think. The largest dinosaur egg that we've ever found is about 24 inches long. Noah simply could have taken freshly hatched dinosaurs on the ark. That would have taken care of lots of the problems of the room that you would have needed to house them and the food that you would have needed to feed them. You know, when we get to look at all the evidence, we realize that when we really know about dinosaurs and all of the facts, those fit perfectly with the story of creation found in the Bible. On day six, God created humans and all land animals, including dinosaurs.